Hello, everybody, and welcome to a Corset 2020 draft video. Before I dive into the draft, I just want to say that I'm trying something new for this video. I did the draft portion, and then I did recorded each match separately so that I could edit together all of the best matches, and, and you don't have to watch the ones where there's one person that just gets mana screwed. So all you have are the most epic matches, so the gameplay this time is actually going to be super cool the whole way through. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of this change in the comment section down below, and I think you'll find that Heart Piercer Bow can do a lot more work than you think. Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to a Corset 2020 draft here on Magic Arena. If you're watching this on YouTube, welcome, welcome, welcome. Also, welcome to everyone watching live on Twitch. Before I dive in, I do want to remind you that if you enjoy the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. If the video gets to 50 thumbs up, I will post another video tomorrow. So if you would like to support the channel and get more content at the same time, that thumbs up button is a great way to do that. If you would like to join this community we have here on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It really does help me out a ton, and it gives you access to the community tab where I often uh, pull the community and ask for uh, feedback and uh, get a lot of data from there. So if you would like to join our community, get access to that, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment in the comment section down below if you have any questions about any of the picks or plays that I will be making. Uh, also, if you would like to catch the stream live, you can find it on twitch.tv slash Nikolai Bolas. And finally, I do want to take a moment to give a shout out to the Patreon. Thank you so much to our newest patron, Eric Subak. Thank you so much for your support at the Faithful of Bolas level. I truly appreciate it, and thank you so much to everyone who supports the channel over on Patreon. If you would like to find the Patreon, you can find it at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. There is bonus content every week over there, and... Uh, it's very wonderful, and I appreciate everyone who supports the community in that way. But without further ado, let's dive in. We are celebrating our 500 follower on uh, Twitch, Mark, which is pretty excellent, and I'm pretty happy to make it there. So, this pack, looking at it, uh, Flood of Tears is a rare that I'm not the biggest fan of. Uh, the problem is that six mana to bounce both players' boards is just generally not favorable. You kind of, if it bounced only your opponent's stuff, that'd be much better. Bouncing both players just is too difficult. Um, Air Elemental is just super good. Five mana for a 4-4 four, four flyer is just always excellent and limited and a great card. Probably the pick out of this pack, especially considering that the commons are nothing special. The best common in this pack is Gorging Vulture, and that card is good and really fuels the graveyard synergies in black, but it's not insane or anything. Seasons of Growth. Season of Growth is a very good uncommon, but on MTG Arena, this card will wheel. I think that even if you're seeing this late on MTG Arena, you should not be uh, afraid of taking it earlier in your paper drafts or your MTGO drafts, because this card is quite powerful. Other commons that are pretty good are Kelden Raider, Brightwood Tracker, and Bone Splinters, but after that, they are just not that great. I love having one copy of Destructive Digger in my red decks, but I don't prioritize it that highly. But Air Elemental is a great way to start off a draft, and uh, always happy to see that. And we can follow it up with uh, potentially some very powerful options. Blood for Bones is very strong. Uh, you essentially can lose your worst creature, return your best creature to the battlefield, and then also return your other creature that you want to cast, maybe it has a cast trigger to your hand. Just a lot of powerful things going on with Blood for Bones, and I think it is a very potent card. Um, other cards in this pack to keep in mind, uh, Chandra's Outrage, this is a great removal spell, and uh, one of the best red commons. I have it as the best red common, just because four damage kills basically everything in this format, and the two damage to face can be very relevant, but nonetheless it is a very good card great removal spell you have to prioritize the removal spells in this format because there's not all that many of them then most of them are at common so even though you might be thinking oh i have to take the uncommon because i'll see more removal later uh you have to prioritize that removal and the best blue card is frostlings which is a good card but i don't tend to like to just take a second pick frostlings just because i have an air elemental i think chandra's outrage is significantly better even at common and it's actually kind of close between blood for bones and chandra's outrage i haven't actually had enough experience with blood for bones to know how good the card is which kind of makes me inclined to take the blood for bones just so i can get more experience um and i think that is going to be my pickup here uh another thing to note is that blood for bones is a infinite loop with scholar of ages and i already have a first pick blue card so i could potentially play a blue black deck that uh goes for loops like that so Blood for Bones is going to be my pick here over the Chandra's Outrage, though I think after having more experience with Blood for Bones, Chandra's Outrage could definitely be the pick. Okie doke, pick three, we see really not a whole lot. Um, Rabbit Bite is a great common, Season of Growth could come back, so maybe we move into a blue-green deck that splashes Blood for Bones or something like that, um, because I think the Seasons of Growth tend to wheel. Um, so I think I really like Rabbit Bite, especially because it works with Season of Growth. Brineborn Cutthroat is a fine card. Uh, you can generally get a couple instants, but mostly it's just a good two drop. It's like a solid two drop. You're not going to be like getting too much value out of it. It's not going to win you the game on its own. It's just a very solid card. I'm not have not been a fan of Gruesome Scourger. I have yet to really lose to this card, and I uh, 
mostly think it's just kind of a mediocre card. Hey, it's kind of dark in here. One second. Uh, but here, yeah, the pick is an easy Rabbit Bite, especially because this Season of Growth is going to wheel, and then Rabbit Bite is just a great card. Much better. Whew. So yeah, Rapid Bite. Great removal spell. You have to prioritize the removal, and uh, it's looking good here. Uh, okay. So having a Blood Soaked Altar is kind of like not great. I don't think that you really take that card early. I think you'd rather take um, like cards that work well with it and then get the Blood Soaked Altar later. But it can be a very powerful engine card in the right deck. Uh, Boreal Elemental is a card that immediately got jumped to my mind, especially because I have Air Elemental. Uh, move into blue potentially for that combo. And then Audacious Thief is another nice option, combos with the Blood for Bones. I really think that getting into green is going to be the right move here. Um, so I'm kind of debating whether or not to stay blue, green, or move into black, green potentially. Um, because I do think that the uh, Season of Growths are going to come back, and I think that's going to be very good for me. I could also just take a Jungle Hollow and help me splash, but I don't think that's the pick. I think I'm just going to take Boreal Elemental. It's a big flyer. Having big flyers is good, and uh, I could just use those as my win condition. So I think Boreal Elemental is the pick over Audacious Thief next. Uh, I think that after that, it's either Unsummon or maybe even the Jungle Hollow. Probably the Unsummon. Okay, pick four. I mean, pick five. I don't mind speculating on an early Renowned Weaponsmith. This card has actually been pretty good in the games that I've seen it. Uh, it doesn't take all that much to make Heart Pierce Bow a main deckable card because it does kill a lot of things. And so I like picking up a Renowned Weaponsmith here, solidifying myself into green. The, I mean, into blue. The green cards aren't spectacular. Centaur Courser does match up pretty well with the other creatures in the format, so it's a solid playable. A green with Sentinel is really bad. I don't love playing two mana, two, two vanilla. Basically vanilla because Vigilance is mostly useless. Um, one thing I will note is that Cob Goblin Smuggler is a key component of the red decks in the format, but you generally don't need to prioritize it on Arena because the bots do not. Um, I've decided that in uh, my Arena videos, I am going to talk a little bit about what I've noticed the bots doing because that can help your Arena drafts, but keep in mind that in real drafts, I think Goblin Smuggler is a good card that you will want to prioritize. And then there's a Fathom Fleet Cutthroat, which is not exceptional. It's just okay. Renowned Weaponsmith has a lot of upside, though, so we're going to take that and follow it up with a nice Boreal Elemental. The rest of the commons in this pack are unspectacular, the best one being Chandra's Ember which is actually quite good in a blue red deck uh but we are not or not a blue red blue any elementals deck so like blue red or red green it works really well with flamekin brawler but we're definitely we're not really looking to play red right here and boreal elemental is a very solid blue common so we're going to be taking that one and now uh vial of dragonfire is an option to go with our renowned weaponsmith but also i think we'll be able to get those later and i kind of want to pick up the metropolis sprite metropolis sprite was actually pretty impressive to me the last time i played with it it just blocks pretty decently the other flyers and can just chip in for damage and uh, block Scorch Spitters and the like. So I think Metropolis Sprite is the pick here over the Vial of Dragonfire. And now Evolving Wilds could help us with our Splash. I don't think we're going to move into red for a Rapacious Dragon. Uh, Zephyr Charge has not been great for me. Um, Gift of Paradise is all right, but we don't really fully know our base colors. And I think Evolving Wilds, not having to take a card slot is really huge for your fixing. And as I predicted, the Season of Growth came back. We're just going to snap that one up. And uh, it works well with our Rapid Bite uh, and potentially other cards that we can pick up. There's also a Growth Cycle, but we don't really want that. And there's a Brightwood Tracker slash Veil of Summer. But we're just going to take the Season of Growth, try to get the second one, and then maybe build the deck around that. I don't think that, I think the second one was in this pack and it didn't come back. We'll just take a Veil of Summer as an excellent sideboard card. Oh, no, it was in this pack. Yeah, we're just going to snap up this second Season of Growth. Having two of them, uh, they get a little bit worse in multiples because scrying just gets worse in multiples. Uh, but I think we having two early on means that we can prioritize things like Feral Invocation and uh, combat stuff. And we'll get a Heart Piercer Bow to go with our Renowned Weaponsmith. We might even main deck it. And Natural End for the sideboard. And that Yoked Ox, he is ripped. I'm really liking where the deck is right now. Um, and we start things off with the, what I think is the best common, Cloudkin Seer. It's just such a good body has a lot of synergy with other cards in the format and overall is something i'm very happy to start with i think that this is close with murder but partially because i think blue is a little bit better than black i think cloud can Seer is going to get the nod for me as best common overall uh, so yeah lotus field not really a card that you're looking to prioritize if you are playing a th three color deck it can be okay um but generally it is a pretty de like decent cost that you can't use it to cast your two drops on turn two so if you have a two land hand with this then it doesn't really work so uh 
yeah, Lotus Field is okay, but I'd rather just have a Cloud Conseer here. And uh, we are looking for like things like Feral Invocation, but Cloud Conseer is excellent. And now, hmm. So Pattern Matcher works with Arboreal Elemental and not really much else. There's a Silverback Shaman, which is excellent. There's also a Bark Hide Troll, which I think is a little bit better than the Silverback Shaman, just because it's a nice cheap creature that's also pretty big, especially at that stage of the game. I'm not going to be splashing red for a Lightning Storm. This card is excellent in blue-red, but I am pretty much hoping to play green here, especially with a Bark Hide Troll uh, pickup. And uh, I think Bark Hide Troll is just high enough power level that it's worth taking over a Shaman and over a Pattern Matcher. And now we see a Frost Lynx. There's also a Heart Piercer Bow, but I don't generally like to main deck two of those. I think I'd rather have one Heart Piercer Bow and one Vile to go with my Weaponsmith, and then pick up the later, other ones later. I think main decking a Negate is perfectly fine in this format, but Frostlings, great, good synergy with other Elementals, just a good card overall, and uh, pretty happy to get that. Another Barkhide Troll, just a nice pickup, really helps my curve out. Uh, Winged Words is a fine pickup. There's another Fairy Miscreant, so I could potentially get two Fairy Miscreants, because I saw one earlier, if that one wheels, but you never know completely. There's also a Tranquil Cove if I wanted to consider splashing white. We're still unsure on whether we're splashing this Blood for Bones. It's not really looking like it right now, but you never know. But Bark Hide Troll is the clear pick out of this pack. Okay, now I think we will take Fairy Miscreant. Um, even though there is a Feral Invocation, that has the potential to wheel, and uh, Fairy Miscreant is just going to be great if we can get those all three of those copies of it. And now we can net cast a spider versus mammoth spider. We already have three five drops, so we're just going to take the three drop here pretty clearly. I don't like prismite at all. I guess we'll just take the two drop for potential sideboarding reasons. I have not been impressed with diamond knight at all. It just has been horrific every time I've seen it. And now I guess we'll take zephyr charge. Maybe we'll need extra flying on our stuff, though. I, it doesn't really do what we want. Uh, it's just better than a diamond knight, though. And uh, I don't think we want three seasons of growth. We'll just take a Vorst Claw. It's just a big creature, and it can do good work. So, yeah, pretty much that's our logic. And Fairy Miss Green did come back. We'll just snap that up. Uh, Heart Piercer Bow, sure. And this was another pack with a Fairy Miss Green. Boom, got there. I wouldn't be super happy to play three Fairy Miss Greens. I think you'd need a little bit more than that. But um, I think we have decent odds of seeing one in the third pack. And, huh. So, this pack, there's an Elvish Reclaimer, which is a good card, but I think it's a little bit worse than the Barkhide Troll, just because this is a, mo mostly relevant if you're planning on splashing, and we aren't really planning on splashing the Blood for Bones at this point. We just have a solid blue-green deck. Um, but, and Barkhide Troll, having a third copy means we can just really prioritize green, hopefully wheel the Vial to go with our renowned Weaponsmith, and, uh, yeah, go from there. Wow, this card's fantastic, but we can't really play it, because it's not really a good splash card anyway. Uh, I think here we'll take the opportunity to get a Feral Invocation. Oh, actually, we could take a Might of the Masses. Yeah, Might of the Masses seems a little bit better. Though, Barkhide Troll plus Feral Invocation is kind of a nice combo with Season of Growth. How many creatures do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I think we're just going to take the Might of the Masses because Feral Invocation might wheel, even though Feral Invocation plus Barkhide Troll is a great combo. And now, huh. So, how many ways do we have to make tokens? Probably zero. Yeah, there's no ways to make tokens, so this guy's pretty vanilla. The Fairy Miscreant might wheel, um, so we could just take a Leaf Kindred as a way to ramp. So I think we will do that, and then just rely rely on wheeling the Fairy Miscreant. We wheeled all the other ones, so I feel like that'll work out. Sedge Scorpion's a fine card, but Leaf Kindred premium. And now we could get a Pup, or we could just get a Pulse. Pulse is just pretty good for getting back the cards we care about. So uh, we're just going to take the Pulse here. Pup does double trigger a Season of Growth, but I think we're going to be fine without that. We can just get Gaining 6 life is just pretty huge. And now we can take a Howling Giant. I've been a real big fan of that. We do have a little bit of ramp to get to 7 mana. We don't really want a second Renowned Weaponsmith, uh, because we don't have any expensive artifacts to ramp into. But Howling Giant is just a fine playable in any deck. Uh, even though it is 7 mana, it just really wins you the game when you get it into play. So... I really like Howling Giant, and uh, it's just a huge creature. Season of Growth number three, not really something I'm interested in. I will just take a Healer of the Glade for the sideboard. Pretty late pack Mastiff, I must say. Here, it's between Plummet and Netcaster Spider. Let's look at my three-drop slot. We have one, two, three, three-drops. Um, Plummet is a better sideboard card, 
and I already think I have enough playables, so I think I'm just going to take the plummet here and just main deck one spider. And we get a ferocious pup, potentially a good sideboard card. We could also just take a gift of paradise, but I don't really like that option. And fairy miscreant coming back in the next pack. I think we'll just take a second plummet. It can be really good out of the board. Miscreant me. Ah, feral invocation. Okay. So the miscreant did not come back. Not the end of the world. Pick up a loaming shaman. Potentially, if we need it for grindier matchups. Season of Growth that comes around ridiculously late. You never need to take it, even though it is good. Okay, so the Fairy Mace Greens are getting out because we only have three of them. I'm not heartbroken over that. Um, I think we're going to be fine without them. I'm glad we got this Might of the Masses, though. Plummet for the win, Maze of Death. Agreed. Agreed. I think we will main deck one Heart Piercer Bow with the Weaponsmith. We could main deck two Heart Piercer Bows, because they are kind of good in multiples. And I might want to kind of try that strategy out. I think with two ways to target our stuff, two Season of Growth might be too many. I think we only want one. could main deck a Loaming Shaman. Let's try main decking two Heart Piercer Bows and see how it works out. And then, what's our last card to main deck? Probably a Loaming Shaman. Yeah, this deck seems pretty solid to me. Um, I like it. We got these in power level at the top end. Got some good flying. Some good three drops. Nice little synergy going. And two harp here supposed to go with our weapon smith. Hmm. I could consider playing another season of growth. But I think it's with the type of card that's much better as the first copy. Mm -hmm. How many creatures do I have? 16. Yeah, we have a lot of creatures. Yeah, let's just run it like this. See how it works out. 881 split seems pretty fine to me. Let's look at our mana. We have a lot more green cards. Let's actually just run. Oh, we definitely want to more, run more green sources. Um, I like 9, 7. So that gives us 10 green sources. Because that with three bar card trolls, we really want to get those down early. And let's see how this deck does. Oh, and welcome to around with this blue green deck we will choose to play first and we will mulligan this hand and this hand is not good i think we want to mulligan this hand too this hand is atrocious this hand's much better keep five get rid of a heart piercer bow and a divorced claw I have some pretty good creatures in this deck. Um, I have a Howling Giant. I have three Barkhide Trolls. We have an Air Elemental. Let's just Renown and then start searching. Well, that's funny. We'll get a bow and so we can play it now. With double bow out, we can probably just mow him down. Aw, man. So that was the d one downside of playing it the way we did. I still think it's correct, just because um, we can pay the two mana to get the bow into play, which is really important. But my opponent had the aerial assault for the punish. Man, double bow would have been so potent. Even single bow is going to be insane, though. Come on, island or creature. 
One of the two. One of the two. Ireland, of course, is preferred. Yeah. If you're wondering why I, I guess, I searched for a forest with Evolving Wilds, it's because I have, um, two copies, I mean three copies of it, two double green card to cast. Uh, losing my weaponsmith is a big blow. This is horrific. Ugh, man. I'm not drawing the best cards for this situation. A Bark Hide Troll would go a long way, though. Wow, now they're just going to start making 5-5 five, five lands. can't afford it. I just have to try and draw land. Yep, we lose. Oh, man. Feels bad to not really cast spells. was brutal. But we got game two and three. At least potentially. Let's run it back. Keep in mind that was a mulligan to five. We were pretty unfavored in that game, but if we could have gotten a bow going, we would have just picked off his guys, got back our cards, and maybe had a chance. This is a good seven. power we can into play. Put maximum pressure on the opponent, especially because it looks like they're missing on Sedge Scorpions. Yeah, the pup ain't gonna do it. Doesn't block our guys. Double season of growth is not optimal, really. But that is the downside of putting two in your deck. Because the first one, the, the first scry is much worse than the second scry. My hope was that I could scry away the second one with the first one. I wonder if they're splashing aerial assault or what they're splashing. If we get a land, I can get a double scry off. We'll attack first. Double scry. I think we just want to land. Get the boreal elemental into play. Moorland Inquisitor. I like attacking with both here. 
get him down to six, so two attacks from the Boreal Elemental is lethal. Just seems pretty good to me. Don't want to land now, even though we do have Howling Giant. We just have most of our cards castable, so we don't want to just whiff next turn. Also, we want to scry towards Feral Invocation and Rapid Bite. Especially Feral Invocation. I can't believe this. That's so brutal. There we go. That's the one we wanted. Nice little 5-6. Hard to deal with. We draw a couple more cards. Is definitely the play this turn. Boom! Let's go. Woo! Let's bring in a plummet over Loaming Shaman. We now know that they have an air elemental to kill, and that's just such a high priority target. They probably have something else to kill as well, maybe a Dawning Angel or a Griffin Protector. We'll keep this hand on the draw. Forest me. I might just lead with the Season of Growth. Might not be optional. I might just have to lead with the Season of Growth. Yeah, that sounds about right. The land is a fine draw there, though. Ooh. Give me a forest. Heck yes. Do not want the second Season of Growth. Okay, Overgrowth Elemental. No blocks. Six life is a lot of life to gain next turn. We probably will plummet the Hanged Executioner. In fact, let's just do that now. It's going to get a lot of value in the future. And, uh, yeah. We'll block the Overgrowth Elemental and then we'll just start playing Boreals. We can pull some Ross of this guy back. Having a season of growth in play makes our creatures mean we'll probably not just try cry into bad things. Okay. If we do draw land, we can double spell. I'm looking for a Metropolis Sprite, though. There's one of their blue for an elemental. No blocks. If we draw a land, this is going to be fine for us. Let's 
tap down this thing. Bark hide troll, not really what we want here. We're going to be getting another bark hide troll anyway. This is pretty laggy right now. get this guy back oh man that's gonna be really good okay huh yeah let's get that guy that actually seems like a solid draw here. Because then we can pick off Sedge, we can pick off the Spear, we can pick off the Master Splicer. Plays around plus two plus two. Maybe I'm supposed to scry the weaponsmith to the bottom. I figured that since I can double spell, it would be fine. Oh man, this is not going to go well, is it? Oh, haha. -ha. It did kind of go well. Nice. The triple block was key. Definitely don't want the evolving wilds. We will take a land off the top, though. That's good enough for me. Because now our 5 5 will be able to block their guy. Then we can start grinding out value with our renowned weaponsmith. Pick him apart. Go to five. Silver action. Three scries to find a rapid bite, hopefully. Force Claws to find an acceptable draw. Especially because we can also use Renowned Weaponsmith. We have a lot of good blockers now. What's on the bottom of our deck? We have Season of Growth, Metropolis, Bright Bark, Control. So some pretty bad stuff down there. Keyword big. 7-7 seven, seven for the win. So we want to scry after we use the weaponsmith. We need to keep him back on blocks, and then we have the two wolves. Perfect. 
and then our double heart piercer bow might just start destroying them. I think we'll just play heart piercer bow, play heart piercer bow, equip both to the bird. That's six mana. Seven mana with this. So we have all the mana we need, and then we can pick off that. Pick off that. Because this guy holds down that guy, this guy holds down that guy. That could trade. A double heart piercer bow could be huge. This game is balanced on a razor's edge. Fortunately, we already used our Pulse of Marasa. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. They don't have two God's Willings, do they? Scribe to the top. Oh, no. Give me a rabbit bite, please. Wolf is going to be our hero. So we're going to use it to kill the spirit. It's this block. This block here. Block. Oh, thank goodness he traded. I don't know what his last card is, but it's probably going to kill me because he kept it on top with his scry. Oh, Metropolis Sprite. That doesn't do anything. Oh, no, it does. No! Yes! Air Elemental, my hero. We're going to do a double equip again. Oh, Metropolis Sprite, please. Thank you. I think we want to kill the Death Toucher in case they draw a Rabid Bite. And kill the Master Splicer. I need a feral butt rage. Oh my gosh. They don't have double blue, so they can't double pump the Metropolis Sprite just yet. I really need a rabbit bite or a feral invocation now. Not need to land, that's for sure. Yes! Rabbit Bite! My hero! Oh my gosh. Where do we put these weapons? We could put them onto the ruined weaponsmith just to kill the Moreland, but Moreland's already useless, so. Okay, we're just going to. 
equip them somewhere. Let's equip them to Vorst Claw, I guess. They're going to get an island, presumably. Unless they don't have multiple islands. Yes, they do have multiple islands. We're going to start getting with Vorst Claw next turn, so... I like equipping to him. Because next turn we're going to kill the Silverback Shaman, attack with everything, kill the Moreland Inquisitor, because they're probably just going to do some trade that involves the Sprite. Oh no. Well, no, we can kill that with our Rapid Fight. Okay. Okay. They're splashing a double blue card in addition to their ele air elemental. Die, frail sea serpent. Nope, that would be a, le a lethal attack if we attacked with this guy. Because they could equip this to here, that would be six. Let's get some scry action. Oh my gosh, this is insane. I feel like we're going to lose. Hey, Pig Squeal, welcome. This game is unbelievable. Sure, Thicket Crasher. Sure. Fine trading off the sprite. I feel like they're probably fine trading off their sprite for my air elemental too. Big draw. Yes! Oh, that's huge. That is a huge rip off the top. So this can get all the way up to four power. What's the end game? Well, we're gonna start hitting them with our flyer. That's plan for now. Hello, Vic City. Gonna scry a bit. Next turn, we are going to attack and kill the Moorland Inquisitor.
I lose to an unsummon. This can become a three, four powered creature. Kill this thing. Kill this thing. I kind of wish I had my Loaming Shaman still. We drew two cards. I just really wanted to kill this Metropolis Sprite. Yep. Yep. So they will trade off. But now I have air dominance. I can't pump the toughness. I'm just perfectly fine with this trade. Our cloud can see her. Yeah, it loses toughness. Man, this is insane. This forced claw has been carrying me so hard. Like, if they draw any answer to this forced claw, I just lose. That's why I have to pressure them. All these are lands, so... Oh, Might of the Masses could be great. Oh, no! I don't have the mana for it. I'm one removal spell away from losing the game because I don't have a green source for my Might of the Masses. Oh, my gosh. Yes! Woo! We got that win! I cannot believe it. Next turn we were going to have a Mind of the Masses that pumped us for eight. So I think we could have gotten the lethal attack maybe. Oh my gosh! That game was insane! Excellent game. Oh my gosh. Man, I'm glad YouTube got to catch that one. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next round, I guess. Welcome to round three. We are currently one and one. We will play first. We'll keep this hand. Woo! So many options. So many options. So we'll probably just play Barkhide Troll on turn two into Frost Lynx. Just because it's the highest tempo play. And then on turn three, we can play Season into Renowned Weaponsmith and get a, a Heart Piercer Bow to kill this thing. The Minor Dragon. Smith going, I guess. Because next time we can just use the Weaponsmith. I can't believe we didn't get a Vial back. Having a Vial to use with the Weaponsmith would be really good. Maybe we took a Fairy Miscreant over it when I wasn't paying attention. Oh, another one toughness creature. You probably expect me to be main decking Vial instead of something else. Sure. We're just going to start pinging their stuff down.
we're gonna kill the Brineborn Cutthroat. Because that has potential to grow. So they might get to draw a card out of their Spectral Sailor, but if they do that, then they're gonna be way behind on tempo. Man, I'm so happy. That last game filled me with joy. They're debating whether to draw a card. And they decided that drawing a card is in their best interests. Just get another bow so that we can play it and uh, save ourselves the mana later. And now, any small creatures they have are also screwed, and our Frostling can take out a big one for a turn. Oh, this is looking okay. Ooh, they're playing Teamer. Cavalier, okay. I will admit, that's kind of bad for me, and I did not see it coming. We will get the scry first, before Claire Cloud can see her. You do not want to land. Oh, that's a great draw. And now if they have any smaller creatures, we can just mow them down. Looks like they're just straight three color. They're playing a triple red card and they have multiple forests, multiple islands. Icon, naming elemental. Unfortunately for them, I think I've got just enough pressure to finish them off before they can go to ham here. Don't want that. Oh, I could have attacked with the Ruined Weaponsmith. Whoops. I still have Lethal in the air next turn. Playing against some pretty good decks. I think this guy's deck is pretty good. Looks like he's got some good cards in it. Okay, this is a game. Unless he has a shock. I'm glad we didn't attack with this guy. That would have been a mistake. Oh man. We have three seven, so we're not quite at the level of being able to pulse and air elemental in the same turn, so we'll just scry one. Oh, that's definitely getting topped. This 
Six life could be really huge here. Hmm. So we'll gain six life here. Go to 23. I don't think he can kill us. He might go for some sort of alpha strike. Sure. Sure. We'll wait to see their attacks before we get back our uh, air elemental. This is going to attack for six. We'll trade those off. I can just blank the healer for a little bit, maybe. So if we play this guy the next turn, then we have one on a two-turn clock. We can just take a hit. He has two, four, six, seven, so he'll for a lot of damage. This is 11, 17, but it's not lethal. And this way we kill him a turn earlier. We can actually just jump with Renowned Weapons with it here. Yeah, I think that's correct. Just jump with Renowned Weaponsmith. Why did I... That was terrible math. It didn't really... For some reason, I thought I only was going to have four power of flying. Yeah, that was really bad, because it, it didn't matter. Playing the Howling Giant was so correct there. That was just a, a brain mess up. I was just thinking about math incorrectly. Sure. That was the wrong creature to tap, I think. Yeah, because I'll hit him from town to six and then I'll kill him the next turn anyway. Take eight here. I'll hold it up for when there's a scary feral rage or something. So if they didn't have this icon here, this double piercer bow would be doing work. <sighs> so they're dead next turn. I really hope this resolves. Thank goodness. Please no scampering, Scorcher. I like how they do first and last. It's just way simpler. Oh, yeah. That's definitely staying on top. Especially because I have a Season of Growth. So any of my creatures is lethal now. They have whiffed three times in a row. Okay, they hit a Leafkin Druid. Yep, 
Yay, you did it. Ooh, Metropolis Sprite, sure. Well, Metropolis Sprite dies to my bows, so... Good work. of death. We're not going to show them that we have a Might of the Masses. Yes! Whoo! The Minor Dragon falls. They had a pretty good curve out, too. If we had a land destruction spell and we were red, like, we might play Tectonic Rift because they're so reliant on their colors. Um, natural End definitely coming in. Beat a Mythic Cavalier with Uncommon. Do I even have any rares in this deck? No. I do not. Who needs rares? Am I right? Hmm. I think I want natural end for their um, artifact. And we'll bring it in over a... Huh. I'm very tempted to cut Loaming Shaman. We didn't really see that many targets other than that one artifact. Oh, they also have Gift of Paradise that we can potentially kill. I don't think that's really worth a card, though. Okay, well, let's just run it back. I think the Loaming Shaman has some potential. If the matchup gets grindy, I can shuffle back in all my good cards. The Minor Dragon. Yeah, these are crazy games, Maze of Death. Crazy games. And there's a keep. Man, our Ruined Weaponsmith is going to do work again. Of course, play the forest in case we draw a Barkhide Troll. I think we just want to get the Ruined Weaponsmith down and start searching them out. We can season of growth plus get a vial. And then we can netcaster spider plus a vial. No blocks. They don't have the artifact, which is nice for us. Next turn, I can start paying to equip them. Like this can be tapped for two mana. Yeah, we don't want the second season of growth. So we will get a hit for four here. But we're setting up for some good stuff. blocks. My opponent doesn't have a gift, so they can't cast Cavalier if they have it. I don't think we want to kill the Spectral Sailor. I think we can let him draw a card. More important to have a double block for the Lavakin Brawler, I think. Don't need a land. Uh, 
that's a bummer. Oh dear. I think we might have to jump Lobkin soon. Yeah, we'll keep that on top. Hi, Spectral Sailor. Wow, they don't use it? That's really weird. an ouch moment. Oh dear. blocks. We need to find a haymaker like a air elemental or something. Now we're looking for Vorst Claw. Our engine is not going to be enough here in the face of a frilled sea serpent. ourselves out of range of one hit of the serpent. Oh, that's a good draw. Well, our only out is to draw a feral invocation into um Barrel invocation into uh, Rabbit Bite to kill this serpent. Lava can brawl is a, a beating. We have one out. 
It could happen. 1 in 23 plus 1 in 24. Actually, no, it doesn't even need to be that. We just need a ra rabbit bite because we can ping this twice. Oh, we lose. Oh, man. Game three. I kind of like Ferocious Pup in my deck just because it gives me a jump blocker. kind of like it over Loaming Shaman. Probably not worth it, though. Man, Frilled Sea Serpent has been a monster against me today. Let's get that Game 3 W. I might have been playing that Fayette way too slowly. We'll keep this. <sighs> Heart Pierce Bow hits enough stuff that it's just a fine inclusion. We have Bark Hide into Frost Links and a combat trick. Oh, yeah. This is good. And we'll just kill this on our next turn. Free value! Either of the late, sure. Oh, yes! Ah, <laughs> naturally drawing them. Multiple heart piercer bows is actually kind of legit. It's kind of funny too. <laughs> this is great. Oh, all the value just killing my opponent's stuff. Each heart piercer bow has traded for, for traded for a card already, and now my opponent like can't play a card, and I can give this hex proof. Oh yeah. Haha! -ha. Justice! Sure. We'll ju we're not going to play our Frost Links here. Hopefully, we can draw land to play our Vorse Claw, though. I'm afraid of a Brineborn Cutthroat, but. We didn't come here to be cowards. I think they just don't have anything to play. Boom! Let's go! Oh, we're gonna do it! <laughs> oh, he even we even blanked his sleep paralysis. Man, Heart Piercer Bow has been a house. This is disgusting. This is 7 9 lethal damage. 9 10 11 12 13. All you bark hide troll, let's go. Oh man, that was insane. Oh my gosh, what a game. Just dominating him with the heart piercer bow. <laughs> oh man, cavalier flame. I'm just hitting the crib. Oh, two cavaliers. Nice. Oh my gosh, that was insane, and uh hope you enjoyed that one. Oh, if you did make it all the way till the end of the video, type hashtag clutch rabbit bite in the comment section down below or hashtag heart piercer bow 
for the win in the comment section down below. Let me know you made it all the way till the end of the video. If you did, remember to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel to get more content, leave a comment in the comment section down below if you have any questions about the draft or the gameplay, and uh, I do want to remind you that if you would like to catch me playing live, you can find me on twitch.tv slash Nikolai Bolas. Huge shout out to my patrons as well. Uh, Patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas is a place you can go to give back to the community, and uh, I really do appreciate each and every person that goes there and uh, helps me to continue making these videos for you. Uh, that is going to do it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you next time.